Leaving the pasture. Returning to an old farm today. This place is very close to home. Somebody that known for a while and he had approached me probably 10 or 11 years ago and said, hey, I'm getting old, looking to get rid of some cars out of the pasture for junk. And I had bought 79 Buick Regal and a 63 Impala and an old Ford Fairmont. Stuff like this that's close to home, just kind of think it'll always be there and kind of put it always in the back of my mind and don't ever have a deadline for it like an auction or anything or like the property sold but just finally decided that this really needed to be done and finally got a friend like Joe with a big trailer and so we're gonna make it happen today's finally the day I don't know about that drive shaft, we'll see. It may just plow, be fun. You're wanting it shorter? No, I'm wanting to. Uh, I'm wanting to grab this up. Oh, the, we could just bungee that up to this hole, or get it. Get your short chain. <laughs> or just do it to... oh. What's that? No, I, th I think he's just trying to get the drive shaft out of the way. Okay, right. All right, dude.
Oh, yeah. Yeah, this truck's pretty butchered. There you go. Oh, stepping on it.
I always thought those little swivel mounts on the back were so funny looking. Some engineer had a brilliant idea for them. Yeah. Simple but effective. Back out, yeah. Front clip and then a bunch of straps. Do you want to have him put it in or do you just... We can lift it in there. Measuring the bolt spread of the forelug here on the Toyota so I can bring wheels back. Looks like four and a half. Kind of a cool little door trunk back it's before they really got into the hatchbacks just yet have such a sporty look to these especially the interior the steering wheels and vinyl and everything it's a cool little rig Chevy? Oh, could be aftermarket. Let's leave that behind for a future archaeologist that can speculate on what society used pink toilet bowls and steel license plates. Big mossy wire pile. Uh, past civilization. of a shed garage It's a garage of some kind. 
built this little building. Oh, <laughs> Here's the rear bumper off the 63. It's the one I picked up a few years ago. I don't know how I missed this old thing sitting out here. may not be a bad thing. Put it on there. This is attempt number two for the bus. We tried on Joe's trailer this time. He's got his little bogeys set up here. More blocks on the front. No. No. Uh oh. kind of pulling that bogey out of it. I don't know why. This one, this one? Yeah. The weight's really on the springs, not the... Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, because it's on the deck now. It's on the deck, but it's, it's, see, it's over this way about six inches. Right. Um, <clears throat> hold on here. I think that'll be good. When we get it up there to the front, we can always lift it over there. Yeah. Okay.
spring will flex back, but the frame won't. <laughs> the spring will flex back, but the frame won't. Yeah. Yeah, you're gonna. <laughs> I don't want to be there. I think we can, yeah. Yeah, It's not going to run away on us, is it? If it does, jump. Are you holding it? I've got it, yeah. Okay. We'll be good. Oh, it'll just hit the, yeah, it'll hit the rollers. Keep I'm pulling. Okay. Perfect. <laughs> Yay, bogeys. Put a huge amount in there. Let's see how good that tire carcass is. Came right out. Yeah. Yeah, driven by one of those block and tackle types, old timer that With the tractor? Yeah.
Yeah, rob these off of a G body. So hopefully the SAE was on their game. Boom. Do we only have five? I have two more. I grabbed eight. Okay. Two per wheel. Here's the... I'm going to grab two more rims. I don't... Probably none of the brakes will roll, but... Fronts, fronts for sure probably won't. I don't think there's a key to unlock that. Oh, yeah, there is. The steering column. Yeah, it's in there. I thought I remembered it not having one. Oh, uh, the, the front I would. The rear... I wouldn't worry too much about. Just have rims on it that'll kind of skid around. It's a nice thing about a donut, it has such a small contact patch. Like you can just kind of, yep. And then when they're flat, the sidewalls don't fold up on you either. Look at there. What do those cotter pins go through? It's just a hole in the... Oh, it's a it's a locating. And they're not really a cotter pin. They're actually like... Oh, a, it's a spring clip, yeah. Spring Start calling you Mr. Goodhammer if you want a title. I'll stuck it there for we'll zoom around later with it. <laughs> Jack pulls down. I tightened them. Oh yes. Yep. You actually did something. I actually did something. I'm not just a filmmaker. <laughs> not just Stanley Kubrick in the mix. The Stanley Kubrick of junk. Yeah. jack candle out and use it as a pry bar use your channel ox as a pry bar On the back, it's flat. Yeah, we blew it out. I think those hub holes are all clear. Or will they? That's the wrong. That's the wrong diameter. I think. We have those two little rims. We could put a little. Let's put a rim on the back. Yeah. Shoot, we, have on we, front we could torch that. You and I lug those with the torch if we needed to. Yeah, we, can get, we can get two nuts on there. That wheel's made for a car, just not this one. 
<laughs> Had you just assumed that they all... Well, I measured across, and they were kind of... Well, their metric is different. Than... Oh, good job. Nice and tight. It turns left and right, but not around, around. Did you get the bearings to turn on the other one? On the front, yeah. The the brake calipers are just. Oh, well, that's what's holding up. Yeah, surface rust. Didn't ding it. These, these pry bars are pretty cool because you can adjust like that. So if you're in behind something and your handle would normally hit, you can just adjust it and then you can have plenty of room. Pretty tricky. There we go. That part turns there. You can find one that fits the plugs. And... What's oh, that? That one went on. That one went on. Back north, huh? They don't know where they're going. I kind of like the look of these cars. Mm-hmm. Got a sporty. I'll put that window down. Open. There's a little gnat graveyard here under the window fuzzy about 200 of them That's, this wheel looks proper on here October of 71, this car is half a century old. It'll probably just drag, they may or may not come loose.
I only do funerals for vertebrates, though. <laughs> it looks like a clown car. Yeah, and that's and that's not even because it's dented down. No, I know. Oh no. Oh. Oh, now I have a half inch Away he goes. Yep, there goes the mouse. Hiding in there somewhere. More homeless field critters. What? More homeless field critters. Another two feet, three feet. Just till it starts to squat the truck a little. Not like Carolina squat, but just a little squat. <laughs> That's good. That's where they have these trucks where they're like nose high. That's a that's a disease. <laughs> Yeah, it's a disease. It's our culture. No, you're diseased. <laughs> it's a form of mental illness. South Carolina? Uh, yeah, South or North Carolina. Guys buy a lift kit, but only use half of it. Here's the Toyota Corolla. This is a 1971 build date, which would make it probably 1972 model year because it was built in October 71. This Corolla was Toyota's E20, which is like the second generation of the Corolla. Corolla, by the time they were building these, was like the best-selling car around the world. Sold them all over Asia, Australia, North America. I'm sure they probably made their way to Europe too. Probably a better car than a lot of the European cars of the time. This is the 1600 version of the engine, which was 1.6 liter. They also had a 1.2 liter in the North American cars. There were more engines available in Japan, but they kind of trimmed the line and standardized it down to just those two for the export stuff. That way the dealers didn't have to carry tons of parts for them. This thing sat around a long time so it's got its share of rust in it. And then you can see on the back quarter there it got hit and repaired once and then hit the second time. Kind of split open. This car's just been sitting for so long that probably really realistically a parts car. Then all the stuff that's like really hard to find and put back, like the little trim pieces and the quarter window. I don't ever say anything's 
not restorable because it just takes time and talent and funds and probably parts car. It's kind of, this is the type of thing that it either is a parts car or it needs a parts car. And we'll just be selling it as a parts car. I mean, every old vehicle like this is going to have its good points and its bad points. Sitting out on the farm like that, of course, becomes a home for critters. So a lot of your wiring, I assume, is not very good. Windshield's nice, which is kind of cool. Don't always see that, but then, you know, like that rubber gasket, all those gaps would leak water, and then at that point it's like, what do you really do with it if you're wanting to build it into a nice car? And not every car has to be built nice. I kind of like ratty stuff. From what I could see, there's not really any major structural rust on this car like frame rot but it does have rust in that passenger quarter panel and definitely the floor pans from sitting it's kind of hard to see under it too much but you can see the floors there driver's rocker I mean, they've put filler and stuff in it, so just kind of one of those, like if somebody really was over the moon about this car and wanted to bring it back, never say never. They all have their good points and their bad points. Pretty basic car inside, but still has neat sporty look to it. This one is the... Toyo Glide automatic. Probably the first 50 year old car I've ever pulled home with honey colored oil instead of black sludge. If I had more time, I might do a will it run on this but not really primarily what the channel's about. Just kind of mainly do those if I have people really interested in a vehicle. See the mud wasps have been in the carburetor, so probably definitely need a rebuild on that. Bought this old Chevy truck. It is a C30 long chassis with the winch. Been sitting a long time. Probably realistically a parts truck. If someone really wanted to buy this thing whole, probably would consider selling it whole for the right price. But I do have at the shop a short bed frame and box and had kind of intended to pull the cab and front clip off of this truck to package that one together as a short bed project truck. Kind of like seeing these old trucks how they were, but realistically the market value on a short bed project truck like that is probably a lot more than a guy could ever expect to get out of a long chassis C30, so... Either way, it's just kind of up to the next buyer. If anybody sees anything out of here, this truck or any of the others that they're interested in, put my email down in the description for this video, and you can send me an email if you're interested in anything that you see here. Not every one of the vehicles out of this pasture actually belong to this particular gentleman, some were just sitting there in storage for other people who owned them. So we made offers on a couple of them, but not everything out there necessarily was available to purchase. That's kind of why we bought what we bought. Old school bus 
has been cut, obviously, but they did wall the back end so it isn't closed. Joe saw this as just scrap. I saw it as potential anything yard art. Or some people in our area will build little sheds at the end of their driveways for the kids to wait for the bus to come. Some days if it's snowy or there's a wind chill, a place like this kind of provides shelter. And so that's a common thing out in rural areas like where we're from. Let us know down in the comments, is Joe right? Is it just a piece of scrap? Or am I right? Does this thing have a future? Is there a use or a purpose for it outside the scrapyard? Drop a comment below, let us know.